Hey everyone, it's Tyler Strike from Universal Rackets and this is going to be an amazing video. Do you know why this is going to be an amazing video? Because in this video, we are going to teach you step by step on how to hit a forehand slice. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, we are going to be going over step by step on how to learn how to hit the forehand slice and then also tips and tricks to improve your forehand slice. Now, why do you need to know the forehand slice? Well, the forehand slice is a great shot to add to your pickleball arsenal. The reason why you want to hit slice is because slice not only uh, keeps the ball low, but also it changes the speed of the overall match or overall point. It disrupts your opponent's rhythm. So by keeping the ball low and disrupting your opponent's rhythm, it's going to be a very effective shot. Also, if you're a beginner, intermediate, club level player, the lower the level in pickleball that you are, the more effective the slice is because not many players know how to return the slice. They see the spin and they go, oh, how do I react to it? I can't hit it, it's so good. Now again, the higher level you get, the more players do know how to return a slice, but you can also keep it low, force your opponents to hit up, pop the ball up, and win many more points. So let's get started on how to hit the forehand slice. So before we get technical in how to hit the forehand slice, I'm going to show you what an actual slice is. So think about a normal flat shot, you are coming at the ball. A topspin shot, you are brushing low to high on the ball. The forehand slice shot, you are going from high to low on the ball. I want you to think about the ball, 12 o'clock's up here, six o'clock's down here. Top spin, you're going from six to 12. Slice, you are going from 12 to six. Top spin, you're brushing up on the back of the ball. Slice, you are brushing down on the back of the ball. So the goal is, is that your paddle brushes the back of the ball down, and that's going to force the ball to spin backward. So when it hits the ground, it's going to skid, stay low, and again, your opponent's going to have trouble popping the ball up. So again, a normal topspin shot would look kind of like that. A slice shot, though, it's going to look like this. Notice how the ball stays low. Once again, when I do the slice shot, the ball is going to die down. Also, what I want you to notice is if I swing my paddle to the left, the ball's going to go to the right for my forehand slice if I'm a right-handed player. Now, if I'm a, back, a left-handed player, if I swing my paddle to the left, the ball's going to curve to the right. Or for the backhand slice, when I swing to the right, the ball's going to curve to the left. So whatever side you swing to, the opposite spin is going to happen on that ball. So let's get in technique wise how to hit a forehand slice. So again, the normal one, you swing forward. I want you to think with the slice, the first thing that you have to do is make sure you are in continental grip. Once again, the grip determines this type of slice or how effective the spin that you are going to be able to hit. You gotta start in the proper grip. So we like to say a continental grip, shake hands with your paddle, hammer grip, or no tilt on the paddle whatsoever. The more I tilt the paddle face downwards, the more top spin I'm going to get. The more I tilt the paddle face upwards, the more slice I get. So if you want a little hack, if you already have a slice, if you want even more slice, all you're going to do is open up your paddle face a tiny bit. Now you're going to be able to really come down on that ball. So after we're in the proper grip, now we have to talk about the starting point of the slice. I want you to think what? That you are coming down on the ball. I'm coming down on the ball. I'm not swinging low to high or forward like a normal shot. So we have to start in the proper position. In that proper position is when you turn with the slice, make sure you have the proper grip. I want your paddle, the tip of your paddle, pointing upwards. Once again, when I turn to this slice for this forehand side, I want to point the tip of the paddle upwards. Notice when I turn, watch what else I'm doing. Notice my non-dominant hand. Where is my non-dominant hand when I turn for the slice? It is still on the paddle. You need to make sure that you return, not just for your forehand slice, but your normal forehand in general. A lot of players, they struggle, they can't hit a good forehand slice because their body is facing, it's square, it's not turned, right? So they're going like, like this, and it looks like that. Well, that was a pretty good spin, but it was out. So instead of 
being open, I wanna make sure that my body's turned. Now my body's turned and now I can go into the slice. So a great hack to ensure that your body is turned every single time is instead of taking the paddle back with your dominant hand, which is my right hand because I'm a right-handed player, I'm going to push the paddle back with my non-dominant hand. What moves the paddle is my non-dominant hand. That's a hack and that's going to ensure that you're turned every single time. So non-dominant hand pushes the paddle back. Again, the tip of my paddle is pointing upwards. That's going to ensure when I proceed with my swing that I'm able to swing down and get under the ball. Players, they have trouble, they can't hit a good slice, they don't know how to hit slices because when they take the paddle back, a normal shot, you're going to point the tip of your paddle backwards. Now I'm pointing the tip of my paddle upwards so I can really get under that ball. Now, after I do the take back, now we need to talk about the contact, okay? But before we talk about the contact, we have to talk about the take back in relation to your opponent. So I wanna make sure that I take the ball back or the paddle back as soon as I recognize that it's a forehand. Once again, as soon as I recognize that it's a forehand, I need to take my paddle back. Too many players, they wait, they hit late, they can't get proper contact, which is what we're talking about, because the ball's coming to them, then they take the paddle back, they get too late, they get jammed, and they end up popping the ball up. Instead, I wanna take the paddle back before the ball even crosses the net, so now when the ball comes to me, I'm not late, and I can make contact out in front. And everyone's slice is about proper contact, making that proper contact out in front. So, proper contact out in front, you wanna make sure that your contact is out in front and away from your body. You don't want to be too close. You don't want to be too far. You don't want to be jammed up. We already fixed that because you're taking the paddle back earlier. But now look, out in front and away from your body. Out in front, we fix that, right? By taking the paddle back early. But now away from the body. I want you to think, if I take my paddle back close to my body, I'm going to make contact close to my body. I need to take my paddle away from my body so I can make contact away from my body. Again, Close take back, close contact. Far away, away from the body, like I'm hugging a tree, I like to say. I like to say you wanna hug a tree or leave room for the Holy Ghost, right? Leave room for the Holy Ghost. That's what they used to say at all those middle school, high school dances that used to be so much fun, right? Here we are, let's go. So we're taking the paddle back away, leaving room for the Holy Ghost, and now we're making contact away from our body. Notice, when I make contact away, I want you to watch my swing path, okay? When I do it, here we are, I'm going to turn, and now when I make contact away from my body, notice what I'm doing. You see here, what am I doing? My wrist is not turning. A lot of people think in order to hit spin, top spin or slice, you need to turn your wrist. You need to move your wrist this way, this way, that way, that way. No, you never turn your wrist. Your wrist, that will make you inconsistent if you do all this nonsense with your wrist. And what I mean by that is players, they think that they have to do this, right? They turn, here we are, and they go, they're, they're going like this, or they're going like this, or something like that. No, I never break, I never turn, I never do any of that nonsense with my wrist. All I'm doing is turning, here we are, and then I'm going out in front. And again, notice, I'm just going here. I'm in this proper grip. Again, if I think if I'm a right-handed player, 12 o'clock here, I'm at one o'clock. I'm turning it, opening the pad a little bit so I get more spin. If I'm a left-handed player, I'm at 11 o'clock, okay? Here and then here. Here and then here. Notice my paddle's opening up, but I'm not doing anything with my wrist. If I want to get even more slice and make it die down, so instead of a penetrating slice into the court where I hit through the shot, right? Here we are. I hit through the shot. If I want to get a little bit more of a drop, let's try it one more time. Here we are. If I want to get a little bit more of like a slice drop, I can cradle the ball and come under a little bit. But in general, your forehand slice, you want to just go forward. That paddle is already going to be open. Now, after your contact, I want to think about your swing path, okay? And then we are going to get into our follow through. So not only that you want to, not only do you want to not turn your wrist, but the second big problem that many players have, and this is the reason why they can't hit a slice, is they think that they need to swing down. They think that they need to chop, go like this, like this, like this. So they're looking like this, they're going out, and they're going down every single time. Okay, it doesn't really look that bad, but they think for a slice that they have to chop. 
And here's the thing, many players, they don't get taught this shot. This is not a shot that many pickleball coaches teach. I used to play tennis before pickleball was a thing. Yeah, it was still around, but no one played pickleball 20 years ago. I mean, maybe, but I did not know them. But what did they, I didn't, I never got taught how to hit a slice in tennis as well. No coach ever taught me how to hit a slice. I kind of had to figure out how to hit a slice myself. I'm not sure why they don't emphasize this shot. It is such a good shot. It is such a good shot because think about rhythm, right? When I'm hitting in pickleball, what's the best type of player to play? Here, let me explain this to you before I get into that, okay? If you ever play a pickleball match and you play against people who are way better than you, like 5-0, okay? You play a 5-0, you play a 4-5, you play a 4-0, and you're 1.0 less than that level, you're gonna go out, you're probably gonna lose like 11-3, 11-3. But if I ask you right now, John, Nancy, Susan, Paul, whoever, user one, two, three, four, five, hey, how was your match? How'd you play? Not the score, but how'd you play? You'd probably come back to me and go, oh my God, Tyler, I had the best match. Sorry, I think I swallowed a bug. So you're gonna tell me, Tyler, I had the best match ever. You know, I lost 11-3, 11-3, but I played so well. I was hitting the ball so well. I was ripping shots. It was so good, everything like that. Maybe they hit a little bit too hard, but that's what you would say if you're able to handle pace. Now you win a match 11-0, 11-0. You play a team or a person that you are 1.5 levels above. So if you are a 4-5, you're playing a 3-0. If you're a 3-5, you are playing a what? A 2-0. I can't do math, but I can teach pickleball. Even though I went to school for finance, that's kind of weird. Finance and insurance, but then I chose to drop out and major in pickleball. But what do you say? You're going to say, I played the worst match ever. It sucked. I played bad. I didn't feel good. Everything like that. So if you ever win 11-0, 11-0 to a player way less ranked, lower than you, or a player that's way lower than you, you're going to tell me that you played absolutely horrible. Why do you feel like you play better even though you absolutely lose and get annihilated versus when you absolutely win and trash the person, you feel like you played worse? Do you know why? It's because rhythm, 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 rhythm. The higher level you get, the more people hit the balls harder, the more dinking rallies, everything like that, right? So what happens is you get into a rhythm. That's why you are able to drill way better than you play. Oh, guess what, Tyler? I'm so good at drilling. I am so good at drilling, but then when I go play, it's all it all goes to waste. Every time I drill, I'm so good, but then when I go out and play, I lose. I'm not as good. The reason why is because when you're drilling, dinking, dinking, you're doing the same thing over and over again, okay? You are in a rhythm. Now, when you play, it's a little bit different, right? Think about it. normal pickleball, normal shots, top spin, or just regular shot. Here we are, return, return, normal return, normal return, normal return. Now the slice, it's a different type of rhythm. It's like a change up in baseball. It's a different look. Your opponent isn't used to the rhythm. They're going to, it's going to throw them off. If you ever have a, a big server or a serving team that's winning continuously, you can't get that side out. Go for a slice return. Try to do the slice return and see what happens. It throws the person off. It disrupts their rhythm. So let's keep on going. So we're going to be talking about the swing path now, and this is huge. You're not swinging down like I told you before, but we are going to go on a field trip all the way up to this beautiful net right here. Because if you ever want to learn the swing path of a slice, the forehand or the backhand slice, the best way to do it is not hit balls, not do shadow swings. It's to watch my YouTube, of course, but also it is to go up to the pickleball net. So come here with me and we are going to go show you how to learn the exact swing path of the forehand slice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. We are at the net. We are at the best place, the place to learn. We are at the Disney World of Slices. If you ever wanna learn how to hit a forehand slice, this is how you do it. You just get a pickleball net and here's why. The swing path of the forehand slice. A lot of players think that you're chopping down. Now, instead of chopping down for the forehand slice, I want you to think that you are swinging forward. Once again, when you hit a forehand slice, yeah, you're getting the back of the ball because you're starting high and with the paddle tip pointing up, just like we talked to you about. But then when you proceed through contact, you want to finish forward. You wanna make sure you start high, you get under the ball. I'm going down on the ball. I want you to understand, here's the ball. By starting with my paddle tip high and continental grip, I'm going down on the ball, but my swing path necessarily isn't going to down. It's a big difference. A lot of players think that they have to swing down, like I said before. So watch, I'm gonna start high with my paddle tip, right? And now when I hit my slice, see if the ball's around the net height, we're gonna adjust it. If it's high, clearly you would go here, lower, you go down here. But watch, right? If it's this height, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go here. So step one, what? We're gonna turn with our paddle, turn our body, paddle tip pointing up, right? 
taking the paddle back. Now, we're gonna make contact out in front and then we're going to finish forward. So all you're going to do, paddle back, here. Paddle back, here. Paddle back, here. Paddle back, here. What are we going to be doing? You're going to be doing tons of reps on the pickleball net. The reason why the pickleball net is so good is because it forces you to swing forward. It forces you to have a horizontal swing path instead of a low to high, a vertical, a choppy, any of that nonsense. It eliminates that. Watch, if I have a normal slice, or this is what normal players do, I chop down. Look, I can't do it, okay? This is an amazing paddle, the uh, new Selkirk Invicta Vanguard Control Pickleball Paddle. I'm doing a giveaway. We're giving away one lucky winner, this amazing paddle. If you want a chance to win the paddle, make sure you click the link in the subscription and check out our giveaway. But I'm not really gonna bang this too much, but they're gonna swing down, right? I wanna swing forward. I wanna swing forward. So the best way to do the slice is by having a net here and doing the actual motion. Now, if you really want to learn a swing path, what you're going to do is you're going to do two shadow swings, then you're going to take a step away and then do one regular shot. Again, you're going to do two shadow swings, two, and then you're going to go over and do a regular shot. Once again, one, two, and then I'm going to go over and do a regular shot that's going to give me that feel. That's going to give me muscle memory. The more I do it, the more I repeat. Repetition, practice makes permanent, right? Practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. And that was one of my, uh, one quote that one of my favorite coaches said. I could do this and practice this every single time and I'm gonna do it wrong. You have to practice the right thing. That's why drilling is the number one way to get better in pickleball. Now, after we do the swing path, I want you to watch where my follow through is. I like to say what? For your forehand, you wanna finish over your shoulder, right? You wanna swing forward. Now for the slice though, I'm starting high. I'm getting back on the ball, but I want you to watch what I did for that one. What do I do after my slice? I catch my paddle out in front. I want you to notice, not only do I utilize two hands on my take back, but then I utilize two hands on my follow through. So why do I use two hands on the follow through? It's because it ensures the proper swing path. Once again, by catching my paddle out in front, that's going to ensure that my paddle ends up in the proper position, okay? By catching the paddle out here, that's going to ensure when there's not a net that I'm doing the right swing. If I swing down, look, I can't catch the paddle, right? If I swing up, I can't catch the paddle. I'm gonna catch the paddle out in front at the height. And here's a big thing. If you wanna make it more advanced, you wanna make sure that you catch the paddle at the height of the ball. And what I mean by that is if it is a normal like hip height shot, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna swing, catch the paddle out front, right? If it's a high shot, I'm gonna swing, catch the paddle out here, right? If it's a low shot though, watch what I'm going to do, ready? I'm gonna swing, catch the paddle out here. Notice, I want you to think there are three different tiers on how to hit a slice. If the ball is high, when you swing with your slice, you wanna finish high. If the ball is in the middle, when you hit a slice, you wanna finish with the paddle and your catch in the middle. If the ball is low with a slice, you wanna finish with the paddle or the catch in the middle. So high to high, middle to middle, low to middle. High to high, middle to middle, low to middle. Now let's demonstrate. If it's super high, and the ball's probably not going to be this high, right? But if the ball's super high, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm going to finish high. If the ball's in the middle, I'm going to finish in the middle. If the ball's low, I'm going to finish in the middle. High to high, middle to middle, low to middle. The reason why I'm doing low to middle is I want you to think by finishing in the middle, look what it's going to do with my paddle face. Normally it's gonna do it with my swing path, right? It's not gonna do it because I'm opening my paddle up with my wrist. We don't do that, I told you already. But watch, when I go low to middle, it's going to automatically open my paddle face a tiny bit. That's going to force the ball to go up. So again, high to high, middle to middle, low to middle. Now a great drill that you can do is literally do self feet. Work on taking the paddle back properly, right? You're gonna start with the paddle back, then you're going to drop the ball in front, and then you're going to finish and catch. Again, take the paddle back, here we are, ball out front, and then catch. 
A great drill to do for proper contact is when I take the paddle back and I drop the ball out in front, I'm dropping the ball out in front with my arm fully extended. Once again, after you take the paddle back, you wanna make sure that you drop the ball out in front with your arm fully extended. A lot of players, when they do drop feeds or they, they do self feeds, and this is for their normal shots as well, is they drop the ball close to their body. Notice if I drop the ball close to my body, if you've been watching this video, where do you think my contact's gonna be? close to my body. I want to make sure that my contact is out and away from my body to the point where I'm, my arm is fully extended. The best way to get contact on any forehand slice or any forehand in general is wherever you get can get your non-dominant hand to fully extended. That's exactly where you want to make contact with the ball. So again, I'm gonna drop the ball fully extended. I'm not gonna be here, I'm gonna drop it fully out. So I'm gonna turn, teach myself proper way, right? Step by step. Then I'm gonna take my hand off, drop the ball here. I'm not smashing it, I'm dropping, right? Now my contact's down front, and now I'm swinging forward. Again, turn, hand out, contact down front, catch and swing forward. Notice my contact is out in front. The more my contact out is out in front, the more I can go through my shot. When I get contact close, that's when I'm going to pop the ball up. The more forward and through I can swing, the more forward and out, the more out and forward I can carry the ball, the more the ball is going to stay down. And that is an ah. Uh, offensive slice. There are two different types of slices, everyone. Number one is offensive and number two is defensive. Offensive is a tactical shot. You can use it on a return of a slow serve. You can use it on a third shot, okay? This is what's going to happen. So when I do it, and you can use this in a third shot on in singles probably and doubles, it's probably not that good of an idea because it's not going to dip down super low like topspin. It's just going to stay low if someone's back, right? But here's the thing, right? So I'm going to be here. They're going to, I'm going to hit it, right? And by going forward, I'm going to keep that ball low after I return the ball up to the kitchen, right? By keeping the ball low, how can my opponent get the ball over net? They're gonna to have to pop it up. Now they're gonna pop it up, probably give me a higher or my partner a higher third shot. And then what am I going to be able to do? I am going to be able to win the point or at least hit the ball at a higher point than if I hit a normal shot. Now also I can do it as a defensive type of shot. If I'm ever pulled out wide, if my opponent ever hits a really good serve, it's a great way to just block it back. Now, if I'm going less offensive and more defensive, what I wanna do is instead of going super forward, I just want to keep it short. So again, someone hits super hard maybe, maybe I just keep it super short, hopefully not go into the net like that. And here's the thing, you can use a, uh, the slice offensive or defensive. Once again, you can use the slice offensive or defensive. I don't want you to use the slice as a cop out. When players start learning the slice, and this is why I'm hesitant to teach beginner or intermediate players a slice, and this is a big disclaimer for all of you, is they start to use the slice as a cop out. They start going and every single ball, they're slicing, they're slicing, they're slicing because they are scared to hit. Don't get in that habit. If you are ever going to use a slice and after you watch this video, get up off your seat right now and put your pickleball paddle up in there, okay? We're gonna say it. I use our one, two, three, four, five, will only use the forehand slice that Universal Rackets taught me if I am in a offensive or defensive position, or if I am playing with an offensive or defensive intention. I am never going to just slice the ball back because I'm nervous or for no reason. What I'm trying to say is you always want to have a reason, a technical reason or intention for the slice. Now, we're talking about contact down front. We worked on our whole stroke. Another way to think about it, okay, because everyone's telling me I'm repeating myself so many different ways, telling myself that I'm doing, I'm telling one tip in like 15 different ways, right? Because different tips work for different people, not one size fits all. So if one thing works for user one, two, three, another thing might work for user four, five, six, okay? The one thing that was amazing for four, five, six, the one, two, three might have thought it was stupid, okay? I want you to try all these tips, okay? I'm gonna give you 10 tips, probably gave you more tips. And what's gonna happen is five or going to completely change your game. Three, they're just not gonna work. And two, they're probably, you're gonna think that I'm crazy, but that's okay. That's how we get better. And pickleball, once again, one size does not fit all, okay? So we're turning, taking our paddle back. This is a great way to think of it. I want you to think that you, how many? Two hands, okay? Two, one, two. So when you turn, you take the paddle back, two hands. Now, contact down front, right? Making sure wherever I get my non-dominant hand to, that's the proper place I want to make contact. Look, how many hands do I have on the paddle? One. And then when I finish, I have two. So once again, I want you to think, take back, two hands on the paddle, contact, 
one, and then follow through two. So you can also think two, one, two while you hit. Great way to get synchronized with that is toss ball up in there. Make sure your hand's out. Turn first two, one, two. Two, one, two. And again, by swinging to the left, the ball is going to curve to the right. The more low, the more forward I can get, the more the ball is going to penetrate into the court. Now, we are going to be talking about proper footwork, okay? We worked on what? We worked on the intention, explaining why, explaining what the slice actually is, what it does, the reason why you should use it, when you should use it. We went over step by step, turn, contact down front, proper grip, swing path, how to do swing path, every single thing we went over except the footwork, okay? Once we learn the top half, which is what we did, and once we learn the strategy and the intention, now we are going to go on to the lower half of the footwork. By doing the footwork, this is going to put it all together for you so you can hit an amazing forehand slice. So for the footwork, for the forehand slice, you need to step into the ball. The more you can go forward and not only go forward with your swing path, but the more you can drive your feet forward and really get your momentum into the court, then you're going to really be able to penetrate that slice and keep it low throughout the court. So I want you to think that you want to step with your other foot than you are holding the paddle. You want to step with the other foot than the hand or the side that you're holding the paddle. Your non-dominant foot if you're on the forehand side. So if I'm a right-handed player, I want to step across my body with my left foot. I like to say dance, dance, revolution. You have one arrow here, one arrow there, right? One here, one there, and we're doing a dance, right? We're doing the we're doing the universal rackets YouTube dance. And once again, if you want to get dinks to drinks in your community, you want any type of pickleball program in your community, make sure you click the link in the description and Universal Rackets representative will get out to you. Some players, they want to go pro. Others want to go 5-0. Others want to become the best coach in the world. My name is Tyler Shark. I'm the owner of Universal Rackets, and my goal is to become the biggest pickleball entrepreneur in the world. If you want any type of pickleball programming in your community, fundraising event, corporate event, you want any clinics, tournaments, social events, anything, we are an all-in-one pickleball and tennis. I don't know if I can say tennis on this channel. I mean, it is Universal Rackets. We do tennis too. I have a whole tennis channel as well. Make sure you click the link in the description and a Universal Rackets representative will get back to you. Okay, getting back to it though, you're going to step across your body on that foot. Here we are. So again, you're going to turn two hands, then you're going to step, then contact, then follow through. Again, you're going to be here, you're going to turn, you're going to load on your outside leg. Here's another thing, okay? So this is beginner, okay? I'm going to turn, and then I'm going to step, and then I'm going to hit. Notice, feet, then hands, hands, then feet. It's not hands, and feet, okay? Again, I step, feet, then I do my swing, then hands. It's not hands, then feet. I'm going to chop and pop the ball up. So I always want to make sure I step into my shot first before I go. That's going to really keep that ball low and go into the court. So again, I'm not going hands and feet. I'm stepping forward, and then I'm going into it. Again, I'm stepping forward, and then I'm going into it. Okay, so the first thing is, is again, I'm gonna turn, take my paddle back, then I'm going to step into the ball, then I'm going to finish and follow through. Now, big disclaimer, when you step, you don't wanna just take a baby step. You wanna take a big step. I want you to think, 2020, COVID, there were those big giant lantern bugs in all of Philadelphia, okay? They were everywhere, and what you have to do, they told you to kill it because it was like an infestation or whatever, and what did you do? You didn't just go up to a lantern bug and you went like this, right? What'd you do? You saw a big crunchy lantern bug, you're boom, big step, big step, big step, right? Same thing with the step for your slice. Think that there's a big, giant, crunchy bug on the ground. You're not just going like this. You're going to turn, boom, big step, and then swing. Another great tip is you want to show the bottom of your shoe sole. So I should see this in the video when you're going, okay? So you're going to turn. Here we are, big step, and then hit, okay? Now, if you want to get even more advanced, instead of turning and then doing a step, you're going to turn, and you're going to load on your dominant leg. Now, by turning and loading on my dominant leg, that's going to put all the way here, all the power, everything. Now, I'm going to take a big step forward and then explode and go, okay? So, I'm going to load on my dominant leg and explode on my non-dominant leg, okay? So, again, I'm going to turn, big step, load, explode, and then follow forward, okay? If the ball ever goes long, that means you need to swing more forward. If the ball ever goes into the net, that means you need to finish more up. Again, ball ever goes long, I need to swing more forward. Ball ever goes into the net, I need to swing more up. So again, I'm going to turn, I'm gonna load. Big step, here we are, finish forward, okay? 
One more time. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna load. Big step forward and go. Again, ball goes into the net. What does that mean? It means I'm not going up. So I need to finish up with my paddle higher. If the ball goes long, that means I need to swing more forward. A lot of players, they can't hit a big slice because they don't swing forward. They just stop, okay? I need to remember every single video I'm saying now in pickleball to gain control, you have to give up control. The more you let the pickleball paddle work for you, the less you work for the pickleball paddle, the better you are going to be. So make sure again, turn on the outside leg, load, then explode, step forward, and then finish. Now, Tyler, when the heck am I supposed to step? You told me what? Turn, then contact, then follow through. Now you're telling me to step. You're telling me to do all these things. Now, when am I supposed to step when the ball's actually coming? You're just doing a drop feed. You're not hitting with anyone. You're not showing it. You should, you should do this, you should do that, you should do everything, right? No, guess what? You're going to step and make contact with the ball when what? When the ball bounces, okay? I wish I had someone over here to do uh, hit a ball to me, but it's kind of hard to play pickleball and talk at the same time. However, though, you are going to make contact or you're going to step when the ball bounces, okay? That's the best thing, okay? So watch, I'm going to turn, right? So here we are. I'm going to turn, bounce, step, hit, okay? I'm gonna turn and load, the ball is gonna bounce, step, hit. The moment the ball bounces, that's when I am going to step and hit. Once again, the moment the ball bounces, that's when I am going to step and hit. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to load, the ball is gonna bounce, I'm going to step and hit. As soon as the ball bounces, that's when I'm going to plant my foot down and hit the actual ball. I want you to think, the moment the ball bounces, it's like firing a, firing a trigger, shooting a bow, bow and arrow. The moment that the ball bounces, boom, you bounce, step, and hit, okay? So again, I'm gonna turn, here we are. Ball's gonna bounce, I'm moving, right? Take my battle back first, ball's gonna bounce, and then what? I pull the trigger, I fire, step, hit. Here we are, turn, ball's gonna bounce, step, hit. If it's a return, if it's a different type of shot, right? More single shot, watch. Turn, move forward bounce, step, hit, okay? That is going to synchronize it. That's going to get your timing down. How do we get our timing? How do we make sure it's the best possible? How do we teach your muscle memory? All these crazy things, we are going to say it out loud. If you're practicing, if you're working with any type of pickleball partner, you're going to scream it to the heavens. Turn out in front, finish. Turn out in front, catch. Just do steps one through three. That is how you hit a pickleball slice. Now you wanna get even further, okay? Maybe for me, I know sometimes I swing more up and not enough forward. So maybe I would tell myself, turn, go forward and hit. So every single ball, I'm going to tell myself three things or three cues so it can teach my muscle memory. So here we are, every single time, if I'm hitting with someone or practicing returns, they serve, here we are, okay? Turn, go forward, hit. Okay, I gotta go more forward there, right? I went long, here we are. Turn, go forward, hit, okay? By saying that, those are my three things that I can do. Then once I get those three things, then I can start going turn, bounce, step, hit, okay? Turn, bounce, step, hit, four things, right? There we are. Congratulations, Tyler. You can count, that's awesome, yeah. Got PPR certification and I can count to four, let's go. Just kidding. However though, if you can do all these things, you will not only be able to know how to hit an awesome forehand slice, you're not only going to be able to throw your opponents off, you're not only going to be able to use it on an offensive place to get you and your partner up to the kitchen, hit a higher ball, you're not only going to be able to throw your opponent off, make them feel uncomfortable, beat all beginner players, because beginner players don't know how to hit any type of spin, unless they watch my video. If you wanna learn how to return any type of slice, any type of spin, just in case someone actually watches this video, you're on court with someone that watched this whole video, that practiced it step by step, and then they hit this amazing shot, you're, you're not gonna know what to do with it either. That's why you're gonna click the link in my description and click the other video on how to return any type of slice, topspin, or anything. I teach you step by step on how to deal with it. Once again, if you want any type of pickleball program in your area, you want pickleball programs, clinics, corporate events, fundraising events, charity events, any type of thing, make sure you click the link in my description and a uh, Universal Rackets representative will get out to you. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter, follow myself, The Pickle Yogi, on Instagram. Make sure to subscribe, share with a friend, enjoy. Guys, if you like this video, please comment, please share, please subscribe. Keep on helping me and my company live our dream by making Universal Rackets one of the biggest community tennis and pickleball providers in the whole entire world. Have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time on court.